Yo, 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 what is up, guys? It's your boy Sirigat, and today, uh, you know, we're gonna be doing the usual. We're gonna be doing another one of these uh, uh, glorious keys. What a beautiful spec. Discipline Priest. I can love Discipline Priest. I actually really enjoy uh, ever since they, the, the new changes since 10.0.5 have been brilliant. Honestly, kudos to the changes they gave us. Like, I feel like they gave us just enough to make us viable, but not enough to kind of make it like, you know, instantly broken and like to surpass, you know, any of the meta specs. So like still, I feel like the power hasn't changed, you know, it's like Druid Evoker are still dominating the top and then like you have, you have, you know, us, other plebs four, and stuff, but three, overall the two, changes have been like, one. the playstyle changes have been just amazing. And here I, li I literally did not see what happened and then I die again, so pretty rough start, we'll ignore this. Okay, this never happened, so let's restart. Uh, yo, 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 welcome. You know, welcome guys, welcome to another one of these videos, you know, today we're gonna be doing uh, Algatar Academy plus 20. Um, uh, what a spec a Disciplined Priest is, wow, amazing. <laughs> yeah, jokes aside, I mean, I guess it happened, it can happen to anyone. Um, very, very, you gotta be very careful with these swirlies here because sometimes they will be underneath the ground. And sometimes they will, um, like not be visible so you just have to you know you have to be very vigilant and you have to see where you're standing i think after you do this key a couple of times and you die like this a couple of times you learn this was almost two weeks ago at this point if not even more to be honest no it's like exactly two weeks ago so you know but but now i kind of know where not to stand and where to stand and stuff like that but you know just be careful i guess don't do what i just did you know don't die uh and here um See, this is this was my supposed to be my argument. This specific scenario is my argument for like Holy Nova still being like a talent we take, even two talents sometimes. Because in this key, realistically, you could maybe get off Five. with. Uh, so here's the thing, though. On fortified, I don't think you need master spell for uh, Vex Samus. But on Tyrannical, one could make an argument that getting that mass dispel has a lot of value since you can dispel the debuff, which kind of reduces the amount you have to heal overall. Which is very important on Maximus, which is... It's a really hard boss, by the way, on Tyrannical. Yeah, I have... I, I will upload, like, a Tyrannical key of Algatir Academy pretty soon. I'll try to get it done within, like, next 3-4 days. I don't want to do, like, Algatir Academy, then another Algatir Academy, you know, that's kind of cringe. So I'll do, like, some other keys, and then I'll give you guys Algatir Academy and Tyrannical. Just so you can see the, the difference, I will say that I think this is one of the very few keys which is actually much easier on, on Fortified, in my opinion. I think bosses on this, in this key, in particular, are very challenging on Tyrannical. Uh, in particular, Kralt and Vaximus. Um, tree can be difficult but only in a group that isn't properly coordinated i think after the nerfs tree Definitely is actually not a difficult boss i think it's actually like one of the easier ones because people have figured out a way to do it which is just stack and then move in the same direction make sure the ads are stacked and just burst ads pop a defensive when he does the the aoe and then you basically get automatically healed as long as nobody Definitely like screws up uh, uh the the cleanse right and heal and as long as the ad is interrupted it's chill like, I, I make it sound complicated now. It's like this and this and this and this. Yeah, well, I mean, it is, you know, it is M+. Plus. You gotta do things properly. But yeah, what I'm doing here is basically... Honestly, I was just kind of autopiloting here from what I'm seeing here. Or, or, you know, there's definitely a way to do more damage, you know. But it's kind of tricky because we died already. So the pool was kind of scuffed overall. But in general, I, I truly believe that if you... Uh, if you pop Mindbender and then actually utilize your Shadow Word Death and, my, and uh, Mind Blasts and in between you throw like uh, a Purge the Wicked, Penance to spread your Dot, then a Divine Star, then a Schism, then more Mind Blasts. I actually think you can do like some serious, serious damage. I'm talking about like, I don't know, like 50, 60k, but... I was kind of focusing on keeping us alive, so I was being a little bit reluctant to, to cast things too much. And here, you know, don't be this guy. I actually just run in the wrong direction. I thought we were running in that direction, so I just ran there and I don't know what I was doing. I don't know what I was thinking. It, it's, it's bad, but it's not the end of the world, as you can see. Like, as long as the ads are relatively near, 
it's not the end of the world. Mark what you can also do, because as of now, when I'm uploading this video, it's a quaking week, tyrannical. What sometimes happens is it's quaking, so you might want to mm -hmm. actually spread intentionally a little bit. But that's the key. A little bit, not too much. And if you have ever done... Honestly, if you have ever done the... the, the uh, what do you call it? Dark recital in, back in Castle Natria, or if you have done... Uh, if you have done it on SLG, uh, Stone Legion Generals, Bark back Raider. in Shadowlands, this boss should be no problem for you. If you haven't, that's okay. I mean, you know, mechanics in World of Warcraft, I think they can all be summarized and brought down to like a couple of... <sighs> I mean, as somebody has once said, you know, WoW is just dodging circles and doing your rotation. Uh, it actually is though. <laughs> <laughs> it actually is if you think Healing about it you know touch. as a healer you also gotta top up squares though <laughs> that's Great the only night. difference <laughs> but it really is you know and, and you know once you get a hang of it it's really not that difficult so even if you screw it up a little bit like i did Healing it's touch. not the end of the world uh obviously ideally you shouldn't you know there's probably some dps watching this now and like cursing me in, so, in 11 different languages and being like it's people like this that slow down my key for 15 seconds Blah! But that doesn't really matter, like, uh, it does, it does, I, I will say it does matter, but, you know, if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world, is what I'm trying to say. Don't tilt, as you can see, you can perfectly fine kill the boss, even if it, not everything is perfect. You know, obviously you should strive for, you know, as close Expelling to perfection as possible, but sometimes that's just not possible, so. And here, um, uh, you, you, you don't need to hide this range, I'm, I'm being a little bit, you know, in a silly goofy mood. Uh, you don't need to hide there, you you just stand on the edge and you DPS. So that was like, kind of like this mage, I think I, I think I realized that now and hopefully I'll keep DPSing this time and not hide. There's really no need. There's only like very few specific scenarios when you might need to hide here it's and that's like if troops. tornadoes are pushing you in an awkward spot. Or like this, if you run out of space. This is on tank though, this is a little bit on tank. Like his, his positioning of the, the ad is... You know, he positioned it for themselves, for the range, for the melee, not really for the range. That's okay though, I understand, it doesn't matter as long as... The way I see it, like us healers, you know, we shouldn't... How do I put this? Yes, you should optimize your damage, but your number one priority should never be damage. I always focus myself on, on dealing as much damage as possible, because uh, especially as disc, what I bring as disc is damage, right? So I want to make sure that my strengths are utilized properly. However, however, very important note uh, to, to, to kind of point out is... It isn't your main job. Your main job is not only to keep people alive, but also to give them like the best chance to deal as much damage as possible, which is, you know, by keeping them topped up, making them feel safe, stuff like that, you know, so just, you know, yeah. And here I'm telling the tank, uh, you know, that I can de-bleed him. I don't know how else to call that. Like I, I don't have like bleed removal, so he needs to be careful. The bleed does deal quite a bit of damage. Usually people don't struggle with it, but I've seen, I've seen, you know. I don't know, I, did, I don't know how others feel about this, but I feel like tanks are kind of like hit or miss. Ever since I started playing retail, I've, I've had like, even high score, by the way, this is not just a low score thing. Even on high score, I've seen some horrible tanking, dude. Like I've seen some, like two specs, same eye level, like, sorry, same specs, same eye level, and then two different tanks will just be entirely different to heal. You know, there's people like the thing, a lot of people seem to think that tanking is just being a meat shield and stuff, but you can definitely tell the difference between good tank and a bad tank. And a good tank will make your life so much easier simply because like they're they're positioning like the ads perfectly they're utilizing their defensives properly you don't have to worry about them which means you can dps or keep your dps players topped up and stuff like that obviously if you're playing with a bad tank that doesn't mean you should let him die you know i you know don't be stubborn i sometimes actually myself struggle with this advice you know when i see somebody is like really bad at using their defensives and stuff i just kind of like get tilted and you know, I'm like, man, I could be casting smites now, you know, but instead I gotta, like, heal this guy or waste the, you know, waste the double buffed penance on the healing this bozo. But in reality, like, what's better? You to cast, like, two offensive spells or to keep tank alive? I mean, 
it's always keeping the tank alive, right? Like, there's no, it's a no-brainer. And besides, everybody can have like a bad, bad key, bad performance. It happens to everyone, honestly. Like, uh, if you're trying to tell me that you've never played a key bad, then you're just lying to me. I don't know. People kind of tend to forget that you know we're all humans and we make mistakes. And you know, obviously, as you go further up, like the the lenience, you know, towards. The, the margin of forgiveness is way less and less, but you know, uh, at the same time, you gotta, you gotta, you know, understand that everybody's human and everybody makes mistakes and everybody's going through something and stuff. You know, like uh, maybe it's a dad that just came home from like a 12-hour shift and he's trying to get like one or two keys in or something. You know, uh, after you know uh, playing with his kids or whatever. So I try to have understanding for everyone. You know, don't be toxic. There's no, never, never need to be toxic. You know, if if you don't like the key or something, you can always just you know not play with them again or even leave. Although I don't like leavers, but you know if you if you're one of those uh, people, then you can always do it. Uh, the way I see it, like if there's a chance for key to be timed, I will never leave. Even if we don't time it, I will not leave unless. Overpowering guns. Unless it's taking forever, you know, like I'm not gonna sit like one hour to progress, I don't know, Savage like Court pet. of Stars or something, but you know, Play we ball. can we can we can finish a key if everybody's down to finish. Like I'm not gonna be that one guy that leaves, you know, especially if I see that the group is like a little bit lower value or something and I know they need definitely like their twenties done. Like I'll definitely stick around and kinda like be around and help Savage them out pet. finish. Because you know, as a healer if you leave they're kinda done. So I've actually had like a DPS leave Over SBG 20 best. and we still timed it by the way. He left in, in after the second Don't boss. The so we basically th did like 60% of the dungeon as four people and Savage we still did it on time in, in Shadow Moon burial grounds. So that's that, that, that's just kind of like where the keys are right now. You can there's always scope. Anyway, I want to talk a little bit about the boss here. So Play basically ball. what people are doing nowadays this is kind of the meta is Savage they pet. will get four stacks of screech. The way this spell works is it stacks it makes you take more damage death. and stuff and also it interrupts you during the cast so make sure you're not casting during Deafening screech uh what i like to do is exactly what i did here uh, i like to use my rupture for the the third stack obviously first two i will heal naturally uh Fire you can uh, you can or, or you can storm. like uh, put your uh atonements beforehand and then just throw like uh instant spells while he's casting screech and then you can like use your uh, schism penance you know and whatever else uh, dps buttons you have available at the time to kind of top everybody up and then you can post like your barrier plus uh, use pain subs on maybe like potentially more vulnerable targets Savage that don't have good defensives for example like your no your hunters your i don't know like uh sometimes druids if they don't have uh, bark skin uh warriors anything like that you know that can't really like they can't really protect themselves from big like instances of damage as you can see the kill Five, kill was like the, four, the boss was pretty three, chill overall i even managed three, to do like a decent one. dps 26k also one thing i will say you can save power infusion for the phase like when you when you actually trigger the fire phase since there is a big like dps uh, increase there i think it's 40 percent don't quote me on this I, I i can double check but I'm too lazy at the moment, sorry. Um, essentially, you know, this key, like, there really isn't... Empowered. For you as a Vicious healer, ambush. there really isn't Rift that left. much to pay attention to. Rift um, bolstering Arcane makes ring. things a little bit Arcane spicy ring. at times. But in this key, as I said already, it's mostly individual responsibility you know people can't stand in frontals dps needs to interrupt since this we don't have an interrupt Arcane i'm not gonna rain. like talk too much about Arcane it i'll rain. discuss interrupts more when i start uploading evoker videos since we don't have an interrupt still Rift thank red. you blizzard or you know f you i guess i don't know whichever one you guys prefer at some, at some to, to an extent i'm glad we don't have an interrupt you know because we like priests already have so many buttons to press i feel like it would just be overwhelming when i play evoker as well right and i compare it to my priest like the the, the skill difference between the two is just insane like how easy it is to heal on evoker like yesterday i did knock on offensive 19 uh on tyrannical and i like I healed four storms because the DPS died on start and we didn't have a CR in team. So I had to heal four storms, I Mystic think. Was it four or three? 
and even at the end oh, i still boy. had like two cooldowns to press like that's how a broken evoker is on Arcane dude on disc you need like to perf Arcane perfectly ring. press your every button you have in order to heal one storm it's crazy but it's uh, my point is you know just Mystic the skill blast. caps of healers and stuff are just so different I, I i really do think that this is perfectly viable right now even for high level pushing but 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 people are just thinking like why would i torture myself with this when i can just play druid and do the exact same damage and exact same and, and more healing while moving by the way which this can't always do this is a pretty mobile healer you don't really need to stand still to heal, which is good. Uh, we have a lot of uh, buttons we can press without it, but... But... There's always a but, you know, we love buts. Um, the thing is... Uh, this requires, like, you to perfectly be aware of all the situations that are happening, and you need to essentially be prepared for damage up front, whereas I feel like I'm not a druid expert, and I'm, I am, like pretty knowledgeable about evoker not an expert by any means but i'm knowledgeable and i, I do think that like these these classes are both like perfectly fine with just Riff reacting breath. to stuff rather than planning and here we saw like one of the dangerous things about the the, the bolstering and you know um just kind of scary scenario where vicious ambush deals a lot more damage Riff than you would breath. perhaps be used to uh mage thought he will live he didn't so he didn't use block uh in retrospective you know he'll probably look back at this and think oh man my bad or he will think well my healer sucks what can i do you know Rift but breath. you know in this scenario this is just like a bolstering moment you have to be aware and honestly i should have been more aware as well i wasn't so just something to keep in mind you know bolstering is a very tricky affix it's easy to forget it because like most of the time it looks like it does nothing and then like you have a giga mob with like 8 million hp that actually turns into a raid boss for like you know 30 seconds and then like your tank dies then you wipe and the keys done so you know it's something to be careful of i'm very conservative with my pain suppressions during bolstering weeks as you might have noticed simply because i usually save it for or like after the mobs get bolstered and then after they get bolstered i also like uh, make sure i am i know they need the paints up i don't just throw it willy-nilly which is uh, actually kind of been like my my argument lately for maybe dropping the two pain suppression talent to get something else uh here i don't play solace but right now like when when i'm when i'm um okay, this is always weird to explain in these videos but I actually do recommend grabbing Solace. The only question no, is no, which no. talent you drop for Solace. That is the difficult no, part no, of no. it. Because all our talents are so essential to the build and they're all so important that it's kind of tricky to decide like, okay, I don't need this, I think. So it's up to you really what you want to drop. I'll, I'll recommend a couple of options uh, in the upcoming guide no, video no, that no. I've been talking about every single video. <laughs> but, you know, sorry guys, I just, you know, I it takes time, you know, I... I really do kind of like think to myself that I, if I make videos like this, I want them to at least be somewhat good quality and I want people to not waste their time watching them. I want people to kind of feel like, you know, okay, I watched, I watched this guy's video and now I learned something, you know, I don't want it to just be like general information that you can find anywhere. I want to kind of like transfer my experience onto you guys and, you know, maybe save you some time of wiping keys because I give you like some useful tips and how you can utilize your tools, you know, and not just like do like some willy-nilly guide ring. where you know i just Mana like void. read Arcane all the spells ring. and that's it you know i i'm i'm fine with doing like newbie guides too like that, that's not what i'm you know everybody needs to learn and but i just think like disc is so like not noob friendly that most people just don't want to play this because they find it too hard and i think that is like uh it's a general consensus i see like whenever you see like you will very rarely see weaker players players play disc i, I say weaker players that's so condescending that's not I don't mean it like that, but, you know, most of the time when people play Priest, they kind of just go holy if, they, if they're pugging and stuff. It's... This is way more niche, right? It's just more complicated. Spec. It, I'm not trying to, like, sound like, you know, it's rocket science. Every spec is complicated in their own way. But in particular, um... In particular, uh disc is quite a lot more complicated than majority of other healers in my opinion at least 
Yeah, so we, it, this brings us to, uh, to uh, Vaximus. Um, very important here to top everybody up before mana bombs explode. I have done this key uh, on a 21 Tyrannical as well. And Vaximus was definitely very, very, very challenging. Uh, you really gotta utilize your resources well. Not just you, but your teammates too. They need to be smart, they need to pop healing potions and stuff they need to use health stones if available uh defensives uh and here i don't press none which is embar Arcane embarrassing for me not taking my own advice especially as a healer i should be aware of how dangerous that is but here we are i guess uh, maybe i was limit testing to be honest maybe i was limit testing but anyway i'm kind of scared of this boss i really am i have i have lost a couple of keys to this boss on tyrannical week and um it just requires like higher higher state Arcane of expulsion. awareness for Arcane what's gonna expulsion. happen you, you just need to have something for mana bombs and like kind of like raw dog Arcane everything Arcane. else because really mana bombs are like the only thing that really matters of course soaking orbs orbs is equally important luckily as disciplined priest we do have the luxury of just mass dispelling people so that's what i recommend i actually really recommend mass dispelling Fine. here uh, if you can afford three, it mana wise two, obviously don't like spam it see if, if you can like sometimes soak it only on one person or something Arcane and then wise. single target dispel them that would be great for your mana but overall mass dispelling definitely provides very big value here and i definitely recommend it quite quite highly very 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 good thing okay all right moving forward uh as you can see 10 minutes after this boss is Mystic usually lost. where you're at um here this guy asks for double plus dl i actually think that was the correct play but for some reason Monoboy. tank decided not to do Arcane it Ring. maybe he's scared of this pack maybe Arcane he knows Ring. something i don't uh it's also not a bad idea to leave it for the last boss uh last boss is Mystic Blast. Quite a mage shield. I think one of the tankier bosses in the raid. I think the reason... Uh, not in the raid, in the <laughs> dungeon. I think one of the reasons Arcane why the Ring. boss is so tanky is because it gives Arcane you damage Ring. buffs throughout the fight. Um... Yeah. People don't really know how to use those damage buffs properly, and neither do I, honestly. Uh, I need to get better Five. at it. But essentially, Four. like, uh, the way the boss works is... And maybe I should talk about what, what we have in front of us and then I'll get back to it. Okay, I'll get back to it. Sorry for the digression, guys. But yeah, here you gotta be careful. Like, once again, bleed on the tank. And there's uh, those uh, mana rains or whatever they're called. Uh, you gotta be careful for those. There's a lot of interrupts mana here board. you can do. Uh, not, not pass, but yeah, you can use your fear as I did here, you know. Just utilizing your fear is always, always strong. So don't be, don't be shy to do it. Now, something that prevents me a lot of the times from using fear is because I'm afraid of frontals and stuff. But as soon as you get comfortable with the with the dungeons and whatnot, uh, do your best, you know, do your best. Learn where you're in danger and where you're not. And in the fights where you feel like you can safely stand in the melee range, go for a couple of fears, you know, whenever you can and stuff Astral like that. It's, uh, it definitely helps, you know. Uh, obviously. I don't have to be the first one that fears, because that can kind of mess up like the, the interrupt rotation and whatnot. But uh, if you can kind of do it where you feel like your guys don't have stuns and interrupts anymore and stuff like that, you can always do it, you know, as a backup option and whatnot. And here, you know, we're just astral DPSing, whirlwind. nothing special, honestly. These astral whirlwinds you can root, by the way, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I did it here, so, you know, your tank can kite, your melee can kind of get away and stuff. They're rooted by themselves though when they're spinning, so once again, this is where your fear comes in handy, right? It's um, something you can do. There you go. Interrupt their spin and you basically get target dummies. These guys really don't do much. This is why I like routes that kind of skip all the others and just do these uh, spinning dudes and the ones on the inside. But it's also cool, like invokers, I guess, are useful because they do bombs and bombs deal damage to the to, to the Astral enemy, bomb. right? Astral Ooh, not, not everybody knows this, I guess. I've seen a lot of people run out with these bombs. Just just walk into the mobs. Obviously, don't splash your teammate. 
it's kind of tricky, especially in a melee heavy group. It's kind of hard getting that perfect position where you deal damage to the adds, but you don't like nuke your group, right? That's always a, a tricky bomb. one. But uh, ultimately, in my opinion, at least, uh, it's worth doing. Uh, you know, it's people's responsibility. Like the, the way I handle these mechanics is if you're the carrier of the bomb, you will always position very calmly like don't run around Astral don't whirlwind. spin don't use mobility too much you know maybe some Astral tiny bomb. ones but don't be going crazy i see way Celestial too many times Astral like people whirlwind. running until the very last second no if you have three Five. seconds you move for one second and then you stand still for two obviously as the skill uh, you know skill ceiling goes higher and you know if you're in higher keys i mean you can kind of trust Astral your team whirlwind. more but I, I noticed a lot of the times where people just die like this where they're running around like crazy Astral whirlwind. i don't know if it's panic or just being reckless but if you're moving too fast people cannot position around you and they cannot simply react because they don't know what you will do it's kind of like you know when you meet somebody in the Astral street whirlwind. and they go left you go right they go right you go left and you just like collide like five times in a row and then it's just awkward and then you just stop and you're like okay move well this is the same it's like at some point you gotta realize okay now i'm stopping and i'm letting you move to your position to chill you know so just kind of like communicate with your body language in game where you're gonna go and stay there and that, that's all you gotta do right so explaining this boss now this is something that i actually learned pretty recently which is kind of embarrassing but i actually didn't know how this worked uh how essentially she gives a deep i think it's a she is i don't know the dragon the dragon gives a debuff and this debuff when they spelled it will uh it will basically give you a dps boost, as you can see here so now i have two of them plus 10 dps awesome that's great right well not really because i'm a healer so it's not amazing and then whenever she hits you with any abilities she will increase this stack right so when you have two you have plus 10 dps when you get the third one you lose the, the buff and you drop a pool Astral now on breath. fortified none of this really matters too much it's all kind of like uh you know it's eh, it's whatever you know so it's easy to kind of like not pay attention to it but on tyrannical you actually want to use these debuffs very smartly you want to basically get into a scenario where most of your team has plus 10 at all times and obviously like somebody's gonna lose it when she breathes on you or when she gives you the debuff Astral breath. Uh, but obviously you want to oh my power. god what did i just do i can't believe i did this i'm watching this and i cannot believe what i just did <laughs> i think i saw wrong where she's breathing but yeah or i wasn't paying attention one or the other but yeah basically just optimizing your your dps oh, right with the debuffs and utilizing it and stuff it's it's really cool you should look at you should look up like a little bit how people do this uh, what, what we did here is really chaotic and really not power. good but i have done like uh, i have done like tyrannical and uh this this boss That's is actually kind of sketchy uh because she's such a mean shield she has so much hp that you eventually get overwhelmed by these pools so it really matters where you place them but i see way too many times like people walking out on one or two stacks so that's not how the mechanic how works you only drop pool if you're on the third stack so people need to realize that hope, hope somebody learned something because i i also didn't know this until recently so yeah anyway pretty chill key uh i hope you guys enjoyed uh we also have to get uh one more group so percentage so while we're doing this i'll do my uh, outro thing but yeah i hope i hope you guys enjoy the key uh, i hope you guys enjoyed the algator academy especially because you are going to get you're going to get one uh, one more algator academy pretty soon on tyrannical this time and i think on tyrannical this key is way more exciting so i'm looking forward to doing that one and kind of like talking you guys Celestial through my cds shield. and my thought process Celestial as we're doing bosses fresh in this key is pretty Astral chill as long as people interrupt and they don't you know go like full int mode and uh basically stand in frontals and swirlies and you know keeping your tank alive can sometimes be challenging on higher fortified keys but as you can see even on even on bolstering week which i would argue is probably the hardest Celestial like shield. affix for fortified even on bolstering week it was pretty chill overall i hope i will show you a dps overall here before i before i go full uh, loot goblin mode um maybe not 
but uh, yeah thank you guys for watching i really appreciate it thank you for supporting the channel you know if you want to maybe support it a little bit more you know feel free to comment let me know what you think let me know about the audio quality video quality anything you would like to see different better improved worsened anything at all let me know any questions let me know if you want to tell me i suck you can also write that i don't mind you can tell me why i suck or you can just be you know rude if you want to that's fine uh but yeah thank you guys for watching really appreciate it hope to see you guys uh, in the next video and have a great day good luck in your keys boys bye bye